The 2022 CNI Ground Mount Project of the Year, as voted by the readers of Solar Builder, is the Fresno County Juvenile Justice Campus in Fresno, California. This 3.8 megawatt system was installed by Helix Electric and developed by Forefront Power. Here to tell us more about this project and how it's just the start of an ongoing partnership they'll have with Fresno County overall is Brian Taylor, Senior Director of Business Development with Forefront Power. Well, hey, congrats, Brian, on winning one of our Project of the Year awards for 2022. Oh, thank you very much, Chris. It's great to be here, and we're really excited about this project. I, I thought this was this project was especially interesting for kind of how it sits in your general partnership with Fresno County. So I, I kind of wanted to start there. Uh, you know, how did the partnership with Fresno County come about? This is a tremendous partnership that we're really proud of. Um, just to set the stage, Fresno County is located in California's Central Valley. The city of Fresno is the fifth largest city in California. Um, and it's really home to a tremendous amount of the agricultural industry in California, and then by extension, the rest of the country. Um, and the folks in these communities are subject to rising energy rates every year. And also Four From Power has worked with pretty much every school, every major school district in the Fresno area as well as the community college district. We're working with the city of Fresno and the county of Fresno. So we are have a great reputation that we've earned for doing great public sector partnerships in Fresno. So that's kind of the background. And then I think what really motivated the county was there was this upcoming change in the time of use periods that the utilities were implementing, which basically means that the middle of the day between 12 to 8 used to be the peak period, and that has now shifted to 4 to 9. But if you submitted your interconnection applications before a certain time period, you could remain on the previous time of use period, which is more fortuitous for solar. It gave you a better bang for your buck for the solar that you were installing. Um, and the county thus needed expertise. They needed it quickly. They reached out to four from power. And then we worked through what we do, which was creating a portfolio of sites, having a collaborative process with them. And then at the end of the bottom of that funnel, came the JJC, which was a 3.8 megawatt behind the meter ground mounted single access tracker system at the Juvenile Justice Center or JJC. So it took up about 27 acres of land. It's going to produce about 80% of what the JJC as a facility consumes um, in annual electricity demand. And it's going to offset 5,000 metric tons of carbon every year. It's going to take the equivalent of about a thousand cars off the road. So you mentioned the JJC was lowest hanging fruit. I guess, why was it lowest hanging fruit? And I guess, what is that kind of site selection process like? You know, first thing first is to get access to their energy bills or, or understand, and from the energy bills, we can understand how much energy they're consuming and how much they're spending and where, and then we can kind of overlay on top of that, just looking on Google Maps, like what the facilities look like. Is it an opportunity for a solar carport, like, or a roof mounted system or a ground mounted system? And then, you know, do they have enough electricity where we can kind of get to the economies of scale necessary to be able to compete with the grid rate? And so when you look at the JJC, it's got 40 acres of land next to it that's being underutilized flat land in, in the Fresno sun. So it's a perfect candidate next to a facility that has a tremendous energy spend. So it's a collaborative process. We talk to the county and we say, how about this site? How about this site? And sites kind of get weeded out either because they don't own the land or they're on a lease and the lease is only five years. But obviously this is a 20 year agreement. Does the county itself just know that they have a specific number in mind in terms of what they'd like to save? Like, could it have been that three sites in particular were have made a huge impact and you could have worked on all three at once or was it just specifically like we're looking for one site there's a lot of factors that go into this not for fresno county particularly but for public agencies um you know there is the budgets of individual departments within a large public agency and which yeah. one of those is, needs to save a lot of money um which one of those has tremendous electricity spend you know what is the mission of each individual entity that we're talking about the county and well, public agencies generally, they want to do a pilot project first before they jump in and do all of their facilities across the county or across the public agency. And so when you have a project like this, like we'll get to in a minute, like the JJC, it's just 
Um, it's what you look for as a solar developer. The juvenile justice campus in particular, let's like really look at the project itself now. What is the load profile of such a facility? And you know, what was their you know, electric spend to this point? And I guess, what, what are those savings that you're looking at? The JJC has a seven figure annual pg e bill and it's a mission critical facility. And then they, as I mentioned, they have 30 acres of flat land with tons of sun right next door. That's just ideal to create this kind of behind the meter. And then when you look at the form factors, canopies and garage canopies tend to be the most expensive. Roofs are, you know, another thing that have their own needle with thread, but ground mounts are by far the cheapest uh, form factor. So being able to do a single axis tracker here on flat land it was just a tremendous opportunity. We also have a two megawatt hour battery that's that's on the way. It was like a home run. It was, it was the kind of thing as a solar developer, you're like, why isn't this already? Why isn't this already have solar on it? What, what what were some of those like extra precautions or nuances that you had to kind of take into account when actually in, installing the system? Um, in terms of the actual electrical interconnection, I mean, the communication is key, and we had great partners with the county that were on every call and, you know, really involved. And when we had to schedule our shutdown, which is when we essentially, you know, turn this stuff on and, and tap into their grid, you know, this had been forecast, you know, months in advance. In terms of the actual challenges of building this, I mean, you had triple digit heat in the middle of summer. With that kind of triple digit heat, safety is always a huge precaution. So there was a lot of heat illness prevention measures that were taken. Um, you also had COVID. I have to hand it to our dev team. They did an excellent job. But then, as I imagine many of your listeners in the broader solar industry can attest, we have these evolving supply chain constraints. So just getting a piece of switch gear these days takes a very long time. And so I have to, again, hand it to Four From Power's dev team for being able to really seamlessly just have all the stuff arrive when we needed it and build build the system without any sort of hiccups. And as you mentioned earlier, you'll be adding energy storage to the site up in uh, coming up in 2023. Uh, how will that be set up to function to reduce site loads and uh, manage energy costs even more going forward? This battery storage system, as I mentioned, it's a two megawatt hour battery storage system, and it's designed to do essentially reduce the load profile, reduce the, the bill of the facility. And so it does that in two ways, essentially. One is demand shading, and the other one is energy arbitrage. So taking energy arbitrage first, the utility charges you more at certain times of day for the volumetric kilowatt hours that you consume. So being able to essentially buy low and sell high, you know, charge the battery when energy is cheap or maybe when the solar is cranking out a lot of energy, and then discharge that energy to prevent the JJC from having to buy more expensive energy from the grid. And then the second part of that is demand shaving, which, you know, put simply a demand charge is measured in kilowatts. It's usually measured in 15 minute intervals from the utility. And this is essentially the high watermark every month that you pull as a user of energy through your pipes into your facility. And so the utilities charge you every month for that high watermark. And so the battery has an algorithm in it that intelligently discharges energy at the right times to prevent a demand spike in the eyes of the utility. And the demand charges, part of your bill measured in dollars per kilowatt, have been increasing more rapidly than the, the volumetric kilowatt hour charges over the past 10 years. The other thing about battery storage, which I didn't mention, which I think is important, is the societal benefits. So when you have a battery on site, it really enables the facility to be able to handle kind of future unknowns. Yes, we know what the rate tariff is now and how we can use the battery to lower your monthly bill this month. But in the future, if the utility changes the time of use periods again, or changes the overall structure of the way you're paying for energy, having that battery, being able to respond to that and then kind of sculpt your load accordingly just allows you to handle whatever may come down the pike. But then it also provides these societal benefits. As we saw just, you know, a month ago, when you have these mass heat waves and the utilities are starting to ask folks to curtail their load or they're starting to have rolling blackouts, having this battery on the grid to be able to discharge energy to prevent the JJC from drawing as much energy 
you know, means that the grid now has a more, a less spiky load profile that the utilities are better able to meet the demand of, and thus the likelihood, marginally, the likelihood that there would be a grid outage or an ask of someone else to curtail is now diminished marginally as a result of the system. Do you know what the forecasted savings will be against the projected bill without the solar plus storage system? The county leveraged a power purchase agreement. So under the power purchase agreement, there's no capital outlay on the part of the county, no bond funds required. Forefront Power finances the system. We design it, permit it, we procure the materials, we install it, and then we operate and maintain it and we own it. And the county pays for the energy produced by the system at a rate that is both flat for 20 years and below their grid rate in year one. So they're saving over $500,000 in year one alone. And then over the course of 20 years, it's over $20 million. That's almost 50%. That's close to a 40% reduction in their energy spend with no capital outlay. And when you do the portfolio like analysis for the county and identify different sites and you sign power purchase agreements are those all signed like by the site or is there some like agreement that goes like portfolio wide each site it should be standalone um, in terms of the economics this is our philosophy each site should be standalone in terms of its economics um, if you can and so each agreement is site specific where it details in about a you know 10 page document it details the size of the system, the address of the system, the expected kilowatt hour production, the price for those kilowatt hours, et cetera. And then all of those, like if there were multiple sites in the portfolio, all of those agreements reference a single general terms and conditions, which govern the broader framework of the agreement. We agree to produce the energy, you agree to buy the energy. You know, this is what a default is. This is insurance, indemnification, all the, the stuff that the lawyers love. It's pretty cool that just your general work kind of within the county, in the city, and just with different municipalities, like just different entities kind of puts you at the forefront. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that, uh, well, <laughs> you know, of the, of the county's mind. So that's accurate. Like we've earned a reputation, um, you know, building small solar projects or big solar projects is not easy. And so we've delivered on a lot of power purchase agreement behind the meter solar projects for public agencies throughout this region and really up and down the state. So Brian, just thanks for taking the time to chat with today. And again, congrats on winning one of our Project of the Year awards. Oh, thank you so much. It's, it's our pleasure. Um, really excited about this project. And, and a lot of credit is due to Fresno County for having the foresight and uh, wanting to do a project like this.